Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Allie. If you're new here, I upload a beauty Bible and lifestyle video. So if any of those interest you, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and let's get into today's video. So for today's video, I finally, finally have a Jesus Chats video for you guys. I know, I know I'm in MIA with the Jesus Chats. I've just been doing a lot of my God work on TikTok. And that takes up a lot of time. Let me know if you would like for me to like do like the little mini sods of Jesus chats that like the three of the three minute videos that I upload to TikTok. Do you want me to upload them here to YouTube and then have like one big video a month? Because I could do that like every week, have like a mini Jesus chats up and then have like a main Jesus chats up every month or a couple every month. But um, yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about that idea just because it's a lot I've been doing a lot but your girls hitting goals and we are getting it together so yeah but for today's Jesus chats I did want to go ahead and let's just talk about quiet time with God let's talk about quiet time with Jesus let's talk about investing into our relationship with God and how we can do that successfully so really I just wanted to sit here and talk with you guys and give you guys um, let me see if I can kind of narrow it down And give you guys three tips or three instructions for reading God's Word and going in deeper with God's Word and having more successful quiet time so I do want to go ahead and start out with some practical things you can do and we are just gonna go ahead and get in that so um, I guess these would be the first first four steps in this is number one be intentional be intentional about the time that you are spending with god be intentional about making that time for him cutting out that time for him growing your relationship so that is my one and probably the most important one is that you truly have to be intentional about setting that time up with god because there's going to be distractions life is going to be there but guess what that will always be there but you making that time has to be intentional and then the second thing i would have to say my second tip is laying out a schedule that works for you laying out that time that works for you um and just keeping that blocked off like think of it as if like you have a daily appointment you would do whatever it took to block off that time for a doctor's appointment dentist appointment any kind of appointment you would block that time off in your schedule so make a time that works for you every single day maybe your kids take a nap every single day at a certain time block that time off spend that time with god as much as we want to take a nap we can sacrifice that if that's the only time we get where our kids are laid down and restful we can sacrifice a little bit of sleep to spend some time with god and i'm not saying it has to be hours i'm con i am saying if you have an hour that your kids are asleep spend at least 25 percent to 50 percent of that time with god and then you can use the other the rest of the time for rest and but yeah be make a plan that works for you map out that time all right you guys and my next tip so these are the first four tips i think i said so my next tip is um actually five so the next tip that i have for you guys is make a prayer basket or bag so basically a devotional time basket or bag and what you're going to want to put in there is your bible a notebook bible study tools such as post-its um highlighters pins anything that you can make that little basket or a bag like i said a little prayer basket take it so that way you can just grab it and go so if you have to go pick up your kids you have to wait in the pickup line for about an hour you can you grab your little basket take that with you to the car and you're able to study or you can you know you can take it with you from different from room to room maybe you're not able to be in the same room every day and so you just need to grab your basket okay this room is going to be convenient for me today or this room is going to be convenient for me today so i would recommend you know like getting a little bag or basket together that has all your bible study things that you need and you know it's easy to take it with you wherever you're going to be or if you know you're going to have a wait time somewhere you can put it in the car with you don't leave it in your car but you know it's easy to put into your car with you like i said if you're waiting in a pickup line you're gonna have a long wait at the doctor's office dentist's office you can take that with you like and that will eliminate the excuse of oh i didn't have it with me or i don't want to have to gather all the things you can keep all of your kings and what all, all of your kings you can keep, keep all of your things in one place and take it with you okay and the next one is kind of ties into the second one of set up a timer lo and location that works for you so like i said a time and location that works for you nap time 
pick up time. Um, I like to, I, I, and I do see these as two different things because it's going to take a while for you to get into the groove of finding that time and a place that works for you. For me, I can be more focused and more dedicated if I am sitting at my desk, but there's some nights where I have to take all the stuff to my bed at night because you know what? I know I'm tired. So let me take all of this stuff to my room. Let me sit down and do it. And then, hey, I don't have to walk all the way across the house to just get in bed. When I'm done, I can just put this on the dresser for now and go to bed. So that's another good thing about making a prayer basket or anything like that. And, you know, as you're tinkering with your time and finding what time and location works for you. Again, I wanted to emphasize this part, though, because it's what works for you. Don't don't compare your quiet prayer devotional time to anybody else's because it's not going to look the same because we all have different personalities. We all have different things that work for us. We all have all of our schedules look different. So this is going to be specifically tailor made for you. Tailor make your Bible study and time. My last tip, which is so important, is to set a timer or a reminder. So you can set a timer on your phone for one of three things. The first one being, okay, I'm gonna set this timer. I'm not allowed to pick up my phone or do anything else until I have spent X amount of time with God, until I've spent X amount of time in prayer and reading. You can set a timer for that. Your second timer would be for a reminder to remind you to sit down and do that time or to remind you that that time is coming up for you to spend with God. So just as a reminder, an alarm, and the third thing would be is I really liked this. This was shared with me that someone does is that they set their Bible out on their table and as they're going around their household tour, they have a timer that goes off every hour on the hour and they spend five minutes on the Bible in the Bible. And so you could do something like that. So you're constantly getting work done throughout the day, but you're spending five minutes every hour with God out of your day. And so the timer can be also be used for that. And I loved this saying, and I'm just going to throw this in here. Why all of these are so beneficial Beneficial is because prayer is oxygen of is the oxygen of the soul. In order for our soul to breathe, in order for our soul to go grow, we have to be setting that dedicated time with the Word of God because prayer is the oxygen of the soul. And so, another thing, um, we're gonna go over the three R's. So, if you really want to get like deep into your Bible study, if you're really setting this time aside. There's three tips that I have for you. It's called the three R's. And so we're going to get into it and I'll put them up on the screen. And this is called the three R's. And the first step one of the R is read. Read your Bible. You're going to go into this time of into reading your Bible into a time of prayer. Always start your time of reading with prayer. You want to ask for discernment. You want to ask for focus. You want to ask for the strength to stay up because I guarantee you the second you start reading that Bible, you're going to have distractions. You're going to start to feel dry drowsy all of a sudden or there will be something that comes up so pray before you read the bible against all attacks of the enemy in this time and not only that but for the discernment to understand what you are reading because that discernment only comes from god and we need that discernment to understand what we're reading read the passage slowly don't speed read this is not a race you're not in a race with anybody to spend your time with god so read slowly understand it understand what you're taking in and actually take in what you're reading read slowly and after you read it slowly, one thing that I like to do is I will read it out loud. I feel like hearing it helps me just to remember it better. So after you read slowly, read it out loud. Read it out loud to yourself. Hear it go into your ears. I know it sounds weird, but it really does help. For me, I'm a read it, write it, remember it type of person. So reading it out loud, writing it down, and then it helps me remember. So. After that, take note of the details. As you're reading, either highlight or take notes of parts that sound out to you. Words that are repeated, promises and commandments, um, or even characteristics of God. Just make note of all these things. So anything that describes God, things that are repeated in the passage that you're reading, or something that's a promise or a command from God. Take notes of those as you're reading it. And that is what the journal will come in handy for in your prayer basket. So my step two for you guys is to reflect on what you've just read. So ask God to help you answer the following questions. So to reflect on what you just read, there's some questions that you can ask yourself. You know, what does this passage teach me teach about God's character and his values? So what did I just read teach about God? What did it just teach about his character? What did it just teach about his values? And how? And the second question is, what does this passage 
teach about people, i.e. yourself? What does it teach about people? How should I be applying this to my life? How should I not, how should my heart not be towards others? How should my heart be towards others? How should I live? Ask how does, what does it teach about people? How, what does it teach about me as a follower of God? So those are just a couple of questions that we can write down and I'll have those on the screen. Um, if you want to write it down in your notes, maybe I should, yeah, I'll put like a little warning insert screen to be taking notes as you guys are watching this video. Okay. And so after you ask these questions, write out your own thoughts. Don't, you know, write out what was spoken to you. Write out what you noticed about God. Write out what you thought about this passage, what God spoke to your heart and what it brought to your mind. Write that out. That is completely okay to do. And after we reflect on it, what we want to do is respond to it. We want to respond to what we just read. Respond to the passage. Respond to what the passage says. Take action. Either whether and this is what I mean by respond because we've already wrote down our thoughts but to respond means to take action take action in maybe he's corrected us on a certain way that we're living a lie are living our life or something that we're doing in our own personal life or maybe he's telling us to pray more or to pray in that moment or even share the scripture with somebody that you just read but take action to what he has just told you to do during your personal time after that speak to god about it if you need more understanding pray about it talk to him about it and it's okay for you to to reiterate the passage that you just read back to god hey god i just read your word your word says this now i need you to either help me understand it help me accept it or help me share this but talk to God about it and it's okay to question him if you don't understand it's okay to question God about things that we don't understand in his word because he will give us the discernment he will help us understand and that is okay I know a lot of times we think oh I shouldn't question God I couldn't shouldn't question God if it comes to you understanding his word it's okay to question him because I guarantee he's going to do one of two things lead you to another scripture that helps you understand the scripture that you just read or bring someone into your life that's going to help you understand what you just read it's okay to tell God I really Really don't understand what your word is saying and it's okay to be in that place that's why we are to surround ourselves with fellowship edifying one another and sisters in Christ that are like-minded so after we respond we are to write down our response so we write down in our journal write a prayer to ask for God's help to respond so I write a prayer to ask him to help you take action or about you know like just telling him that you don't understand so write your response down write down how you plan to apply the scripture to your life how are you going to apply this to your life you know we have to go into all of these wholeheartedly why because a half-hearted search isn't will not lead us to god a half-hearted search is not going to lead us to god so that's what we have to be intentional we have to be diving deep into our words, read, reflect, respond, and pour out our entire heart into that. Because if our whole heart's not in it, we're not going to be led to God. And one of the main purposes in the BSF group, and I've, this has stuck with me every time that I go, but Bible Study Fellowship is that their main goal is that for us to understand the word, for our minds to maintain the word, so that way we hold onto it, we grasp onto it, we understand it, understand it, maintain it, so that we can go out into the world and share it. And that is one of the main purposes of any alone time with God with any Bible study time with God is the purpose to maintain it understand it and to share it so understand maintain and share it um, wherever you are be there so if you're going to choose to be in time with God be there there is one more ac acronym that i wanted to share with you guys and that is about your prayer time maybe you don't know how to go into your prayer time to even start reading your word and i want to share with you guys the acronym acts so a c t s which is actually a book in the bible but if you actually read acts it's a lot about prayer but acts is a book in the bible but it's also an acronym so the a stands for adoration come to god um adoring him telling him how great he is basically worshiping him with your words and your prayer adoration that's why whenever you read the the prayer it says our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name that is adoration um thy kingdom come thy will be done on your earth as it is in heaven so adoration you're admiring god's work you're admiring what he's going to do you're adoring god the c stands for confession so this is where we confession confess to god our sins and we repent from our sins and we ask for his confession um we ask for his forgiveness so the c stands for confession which is always important to live a life of repentance which is constantly confessing our sins um to god and if we're still struggling with that sin maybe confess a sin to a brother or sister in christ to help us get back on track 
that's a bunny trail but yeah c is for confession in your prayer next we have the t which is to thank god for all that he has done all that he's going to and just for being god just thanksgiving so the t is for thanksgiving you're going to thank god in your prayer and the s is for supplication so make your request made known to god whatever you are struggling with whatever you need him for if your request is simply just to grow deeper with him or to understand his word more that is supplication is just making our request made known to god and i pray that this helps you enter into your devotional time with prayer and with just reading reflecting and responding whenever you are reading and that's why i say if there's one thing that or if there's two things that i want you to take away from this is to get your Bible basket, your Bible study basket together and to set a time block in your day. Those are probably the two major ones. And then in your study time, you can apply this read it, write it, or this read it, reflect and respond type of application as you are reading. And so I really pray that this blessed you guys. I hope that it helps you guys. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like quiet time is something that a lot of people struggle with finding that time in your day finding that time to sacrifice to god finding that time to sacrifice of ourselves wanting to sleep or eat or sleep in a little later i feel like for me a lot of it revolves around sleep either going to sleep earlier sleeping in later or taking that nap in the middle of the day and those are all times that i spend with god morning afternoon and night and those are times that i spend some form of time in the word of god and you know sleep distractions even your kids and that's another thing is like work around that's why i say tailor make it to you work around your kids schedule as well so that way it's beneficial to you to where your kids are not a distraction we love them we love them we love our kids we love them and it's okay to say they can just they can be a distraction for us when it comes to the things of god but we can't be the parents that god needs us to be if we're not setting aside that time for him so I pray that this blesses you. I pray that, you know, you, you're able to take some things away from this and let me know what are some things that you do that help you. Please leave that in the comments because I'm always willing to try new things and incorporate new things in my Bible study time. So I love you guys, but always remember that Jesus loves you more. Um, our next video should be able to should be over sharing the gospel. So yeah, I'm going to do some studying on that. So yeah, I love you guys. Always remember that Jesus loves you more. If you have not already, please give me a thumbs up. Also hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.